Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris Olmi. We're here today with season two of our Rumbling Rocky save on franchise hockey manager two. So yeah, we're back with the Colorado Avalanche. Season one is done. The draft has been taken care of. Everything's lined up now ready. We're in preseason. So I've made a few changes. We will be looking at those kind of how the draft went how we think it sort of uh went and also a little bit of feedback from you guys you have had your say uh some people on twitter did let me know that they thought we did well with one draft pick not so well with another what we're doing isn't entirely realistic you know we don't normally see teams uh ever draft more than say once or twice in the first round to get three is a bit crazy especially getting them so high as well uh, teams don't draft, you know, a small amount of guys right at the top. They will have a lot more draft picks throughout the draft. So we will get to all that. I would like to say, you know, my apologies for not putting up a video over the last few days. I have streamed a couple of times and not particularly this series, but other games that I've had going on a series on YouTube. Uh, I've had some recording issues. I've had some real life stuff going on. So things got a bit crazy for a few days and I'm trying to get back into it now. So, you know, my apologies for that. I'll try and give people a bit more notice if it happens again. But thank you for sticking with us if you have or welcome if you're new. So the point of this save was not only to get success now, but to prolong and sustain that success. I'm not looking to get the best team in the first season to win everything and then watch half of it retire or need to be traded away because of cap issues and lose it to free agency and that's just not what we were after. Now I know a couple of people uh, along the way last year did want me to trade for some big name mid-30s players who could really take us to another level. Um, I've, gone a, I've gone a different way, I've gone young and I'm fairly happy with that so we'll jump in now to our 30 uh, sorry, 23-man squad here. And uh, I feel pretty good about this squad. This is a squad that should take us through the entire season, covering injuries, everything quite nicely. If we sort through age, we can see, you know, we've got a couple of elder players on this. But, you know, three players, 28 and older. Nobody older than 30. This isn't a veteran team. But last season we showed that we could do well in the regular season. I'm not sure if we can look at last season at all. Not particularly. So, history, maybe? So, uh, no. I'm not sure. I know there's, there is something in here. There is something in here which allows us to look. But basically we were second to the Chicago Blackhawks and yeah, things didn't quite go our way. We lost in the first round of the playoffs. But yeah, I, I think that we're better this season. I do believe we are better. In terms of depth, in terms of players we've got moving forward, I mean this squad is very, very much the same as the one we saw last season you know the end of last season we did pick up schneider great goaltender a little bit of an improvement for me over uh valamov a lot of people were surprised that that trade went through um but you all agree it was a good trade for us and it was fairly realistic it was fairly realistic getting binnington is a good move you know we get a little bit worse now in terms of our backup but we do have more potential there so we are able to trade Schneider if he has a couple of bad years. And maybe in three years we can trade Schneider for a draft pick just before he starts to tail off. And Binnington then might be a four-star player, maybe even a little higher. And uh, you know, we'll see what he can do there. You know, we got Big Rass there as our backup defenseman. We've still got Gottesby here, Olov and Pietrangelo as our three left-sided defenders. Barry, Goodbranson, and Truba are our three right-sided 
defenseman. So Eric Gobranson has come in, and I like him. I like what he does. He's a third liner. He doesn't need to be spectacular, but I feel he'll do a good job. So really hoping that um, Gobranson picked up, of course, uh, via a trade. We will look at all the trades, but he fits that pretty nicely uh, for me. A little bit better, maybe, than Eric Johnson, so that's kind of a kind of a wipe there. They're both exactly the same for me. Now, on the left, we stick with Landeskog on the first line and Budka on the second. But we've picked up another couple of people. we got Rich, Rickard Raquel, who is a very nice player. Really, he's the same as Bodka for me. He can play anywhere. He can do anything. You know, he's a couple of years younger. We're going with some more, you know, Scandinavians on the team. And uh, as well, Nicholas Cudils. I like Nick. I think he's a good young player. He's cheap. We've got him on a four-year deal. He'll play a lot on that fourth line. And, of course, we can always play Mikko Rantanen. The reason why he isn't actually dressed is I've been trying to trade Rantanen because I think he is still someone we could trade away to get draft picks. Plural. Like a second, maybe out of touch there, but two-thirds, a third, and a fourth, maybe tie him in with a youngster. I don't know, but Rantanen might be a player we could get rid of. Now, Matt Shane, he is just fantastic. We need to keep him. We've moved, you know, We've moved a little bit here, but Ryan O'Reilly keeps that second spot. I was thinking of putting him, in, him on the right wing and bringing McKinnon back out, but I like Ryan O'Reilly as a centre. Uh, Gergensons is our third option. And then I decided to pick up Adam Lowry, I believe in free agency. Uh, pretty decent defensive sort of fourth liner. A little bit of potential, a little bit of a chance for him to step up. He's still young. So between him and Gergensons... That is a nice little defensive option down the middle. On the right, we do have Hansel back once again. Decent player. Of course, McKinnon's on the first line. Really need a big season from there to here. But JT Miller, another young guy. Good offensive category there. Sidlowski comes back in as well. He's the all-rounder. And Jamie McGinn. Now, 28, he's not going to be a great player. But... He does enough, and he's another defensive option. So I've I've tried to smooth out the differences between the defensive forwards and the offensive forwards. I thought we had too many offense. Now we've got a lot of defensive players there. So I, it could balance out in that time. I think these are the lineups we're going to go with to begin with. So Landeskog, Duchesne, McKinnon, Bodka, O'Reilly, Hansel, Rackle, Gergensons, Miller... Kadils, Lowry and Sidlovsky. Uh, Petrangelo and Truber on the first line defence. Gottespierre and Barry on that second. And all of and good Branson. So, transactions. Let's jump in and take a look at what moves we actually made when. So, you can see here the first thing we did was a free agency uh, deal to pick up good Branson. I like that a lot. Then we also picked up Manuel Weidere. Good young German. You know, he's got potential to grow. I like him a decent amount as it is. He's got good offense, good physicals. You know, he could offer us a little bit there. So I'm, I'm happy to see what he could do going forward. We also then did the trade for Kerr deals with Johnson. We also set down Martin, Gertsen, Clark, Como. None of those we wanted for this season. And, you know, we got good Branson in, so Johnson was a good piece of trade bait. So Cadiz comes in through that. We had to re-sign him and Hansel and got this be here just to make sure that we got the right amount of years on their contract. Lowry then came through the free agency. This was a huge free agency for us. Huge. Um, JT Miller came in, Jimmy McGinn's come in, and then Spencer Smallman as well. So 20-year-old centre, can play right wing. And I've got a feeling I might want to play him on the right wing going forward. So 
decent all-round kind of player. Good offensive read, though. Gets open. You know, good defensive positioning. So there's a few nice little stats there, which I'm quite happy with. Decent amount of leadership and determination as well. Nice to see in a young guy. So if Gergensons doesn't work out, or some of the other young centres we've got, Smallman might come in. Maybe if Sivlovsky goes out and McGinn doesn't work out, Smallman can come onto that fourth line, right wing, and maybe develop there. So he's got a full star to actually improve. So we sent him down for the time being. But that was it, really, for the transactions. One trade, a bunch of free agency. And, of course, in the draft, we did pick up Gustafsson, who looks quite decent. We picked up Chris, who... Chad Chris is someone you say I reached a lot for. Now, Gustafsson, people are happy with. That is, you know, the sixth pick in the second round. That's a good place for a four-star potential goaltender to go. Chad Chris, I'm hearing that a lot of people see him go later in the first round maybe 20s to 30s uh, maybe even in the second round so to see him go ninth overall maybe a bit of a reach so you know maybe we didn't do so good there Pultrajavi everybody seems fairly split on him and Lane so I'm happy with who I got a lot of people think that Lane is the better offensively but Pulsajavi is a little more rounded or a little better sort of physically. Um, I don't know. We're going to see how that one works out. But I'm happy with him as our second overall pick. And of course, we've still got the options on these other players. So, Mironov there. I need to sign him um, by the 18, 2018. Then we've got uh, Will Butcher as well, which is a trade bait now if I like Chad Chris. If I don't like Chris, I can keep Butcher. I don't think there's too much in it, really. But for three extra years, I might keep Chan Chris and trade Will Butcher. Because we've already got Bigrass there as well, who is probably better than them both anyway. So he's playing as our backup, ready in case anyone needs to get scratched through injury or poor form. Um, but, you know, that's not too bad. We've still got a couple of years to sign him. So we can either trade away his rights or wait and see on that one. Then Heinen, who I believe in a lot. Look at that four, star uh, four and a half star potential. Troy Terry as well then in 2020, who might be trade bait. But again, I quite like Troy Terry. So Heinen might be the better option, but... We might be able to find room for both. And then, of course, Crease himself. So, that's kind of where we are and where we went to. We got no possible free agents. The free agents that are available don't really interest me. We've got... Come on. We've got Planek here who could be quite decent, but I think defensively we're okay. Stone, again, we're okay, although... I do like Michael Stone. I think that 15 defensive, 14 physical, 14 mental. He'll be a good member of a team somewhere in this league. Same with Plan Nick, even though he's a bit more sort of rounded on mainly 13s. And Travis Moen, he's a little old now, but he could still do a job. Barbario as well, not quite as good as the other two defensemen. I am looking here though, and two four and a half star potentials in defense so morgan ellis and stephen johns i'm not sure whether we should go for those or not let me know what you think because i don't think we need them but they could be good we could use someone else as trade bait is that kind of what you want to see us do i'm not sure i'm not sure apart from those two i don't think there's too much available so we're going to go through our preseason. Let's take a look at our uh, our schedule. Yeah, how, I can't remember how many games are in this uh, preseason. So 
we're just going to get to the regular season and see what happens. Let me just, oops. Let me just make sure all our scouts are set up. And there we go. So regular season starts on the 7th of October. So I'm going to sim, sim through this. We'll see if anything pops up that needs to pause the sim. But we'll see where we are at the end of this uh, preseason and how the team looks. So you can have your say on any changes you'd like to see us make. Anything you feel we need to make. So sort of, have I overlooked anything? And also on Rantanen and the two free agent uh, right defenders. Should we look to pick up one of those defenders? Maybe both. Maybe trade them. Maybe replace something we've got. Maybe as backup. I'm not sure there. I don't think we need them, but... You know, they, they are options. They are options. And then, of course, Rantanen himself. Is he trade bait? Should he be playing? Should he be backup where I've currently got him? Let me know what you feel on those, but... We'll come back after the end of preseason and see exactly where we are ready for the first game of the year. Okay, guys, we're back here at the start of the regular season. Our game is tomorrow at Montreal to open things up. So, uh, we did... Well, some stuff's happened. I'll run you through these in turn, so... We got the salary cap, nothing big there. Ben Bishop, though, heading from Tampa Bay. A four-star goaltender with five, uh, four four-and-a-half-star potential. Pretty good Ben Bishop. You know, not, not a slouch of a goaltender. And he's headed over to the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for the rights to Philip Hronek. Why, I don't know. I don't know, but that does mean Tampa Bay think that Andre Vasilevsky is a better goaltender than Ben Bishop. And it's hard to see now, but he's 22, he's got a lot of potential, and Vasilevsky could end up scary. My thought is, they really should have got more for him. They really should have. Like, Hronek, I'm not sold on. They could have got a first... And, you know, that first would have picked up a lot better player than Ronick, probably. So, I think that's a bad deal for Tampa Bay, but that's the first sort of big thing that's happened in this, uh, in this off-season, as it were, in the pre-season. So, that's nice. We've got some good players coming through here as well. And uh, we'll see where we end up in the draft. I'm not going to try and skew the draft as much in our favour as we did season one. So Hansel there, his positioning and offensive read went down. Everybody else is improving slightly though, so having that young squad does mean that we're always getting better. Excuse me, guys. Players on the farm team need to clear, clear waivers. I don't believe that we actually have anybody on Fort Wayne and the ones on San Antonio don't need to clear waivers. So we're okay there. We're okay there. Uh, the Oilers are done with Anton Lander. I like Anton. I'll, I'm tempted to put a bid in and try and claim him off waivers, but that's mainly because of his adaptability, not much else. I, I think I've got to trust my depth there in the forward core. Uh, Marcus Foligno, now he is out injured, but this is someone I did look at maybe adding to the roster before I lined up the deal for uh, Cadiz. So I like him. I'm not sure, though, that we're going to need another player in that position. But there's two decent waiver options there, two fourth liners, maybe a third liner. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting to see them go on waivers. Someone should definitely pick up Foligno. I think he's the better of the two. But Lander should land on another team pretty soon. The season about to get underway. Early Cup favourites and Colorado with Matt Duchesne. Doug Armstrong on the St. Louis Blues and Nashville Shea Weber. We're the front three. 
know, Hampus Lindholm might push Anaheim out of the dark horses into the main race. And uh, Crosby, Stamkos, Ovechkin going after the scoring race. The top defensemen in the league are Eric Carlson, Oliver ekman Larson, and, of course, Shea Weber. To see Shea Weber's kind of scary. ekman Larson's getting better. And Eric Carlson is just pretty much godly. Um, I did try and swing a trade for him, but just nothing doing. There's no way we could do that. It was a bit like us trying to get Carey Price. But, um, yeah, we do have Corey Schneider and the Holt Beast there. It's also going to be big for Washington. So, we are probably the worst at those three goaltenders. But uh, I'm happy with where we are goaltending. I'd love I'd love Eric Carlson. I just don't think it's going to be... Uh, yeah, it's just not going to be on the cards for us. I think Truba is a good two-way defenseman. Barry's good going forward. Gubranson could be a good defensive member there. So the right side of the defense as well does seem to be locked up. On the left, I think I've got Petrangelo defensive. And either Gotsis be here or Orlov is offensive. The other one's kind of a two-way, um, I believe. One of them's a bit more balanced than the other. So I think I've got that balance in defense. I do believe that. So I'm not really sure what about our goaltending, Pat Schneider. we got two young prospects. Maybe we trade them for somebody great. If someone great comes along, that's available. Maybe we run with one of them, the other as backup. And moving forward, you know, left wing, Landeskog, Bodka, Rackle, Rantanen, Kadils, I think is a great five to have there. We've got Rantanen is an offensive left wing. Rackle and Kadils are a little bit more defensive, I believe, or a little bit more rounded, maybe a third line there. Uh, Bodker and Landeskog, I think, are perfect for second liners. So, I'm happy there. Uh, Gergensons is a good little two-way defensive centre. Heinen could be the same. Um, going forwards, you know, O'Reilly and Duchesne are great, but again, they can play both sort of offence and defence quite highly. So, I'm, I'm happy with the depth there at centre. You know, We've got Lowry there, I think, is more of a defensive centre on that fourth line at the moment, which is maybe his spot until Terry's ready. He can come on the roster then. And Vaidera, I think, is more of an offensive-minded player. So we could put O'Reilly back onto the right wing. We could sort of move players about if we need to because we've got the depth there. And then on the right wing, Nate McKinnon, offensive beast. We know this. Um... Apart from that, I don't know. Paul Zizhavi looks like he'll turn into another offensive-minded right winger. So I'm not sure where him and McKinnon fit on that left, uh, sort of right wing. Um, Hansel is just good all round. Nice two-way player. Sidlovsky looks like he's a rounded player as well. Um, Miller, I'm not sure whether he's offensive or defensive. We can have a quick look at Miller. Let's go. So JT Miller, maybe slightly more offensive, but he's fairly well rounded there. I'm fairly happy. Yeah, he's definitely a little more offensive minded and very strong mentally. So we've got good depth on that side going forward. Defensively, I'm not sure we've got anything really on the right wing, which is why O'Reilly might come back if if some of the centers come into play. He might drift out onto the right-hand side with McKinnon. And, yeah, maybe those two pull Zizhavi. I mean, that's a stacked right wing then. Maybe we've got to make some moves and trade away some of this power for depth and picks later on. But one thing I did do is Stephen Johns. I offered him a little contract. Um... How much was it? Like six hundred and fifty was it? Yeah, six fifty for I think four years. Three years, maybe four years. And I like his conditioning and hockey sense. I like looking here and seeing some decent numbers. He's not quite ready for the first team yet, but he's got some really nice 
development number. So 24 years of age, he will be back up. He's dropped from four and a half to three and a half when we signed him. So maybe he's not as good as we thought he was on free agency. But I don't know. We'll wait and see. He's down in San Antonio now as well. Alongside. Oop. Here we go. Alongside Smallman and Vaidra. So we've got some decent sort of backup prospects there couple of forwards and a defenseman and of course we do have a bit of a a surplus of talent on the main roster as well now Nicholas Curdeals he did get injured so Rantanen just slotted into the fourth line I might push him up to the third drop Rascal back to sorry Rackel back to the fourth line that might work out better I might even put Bodka down on the third line and push Rantanen up on the second that's something I wanted to do last year. It's something I tried. Um, I don't know. I don't know about Mika Ranton, and that's the thing. He did not have a good season. 15 points in 82 games. I just... I'm not sure why he's not working the way he should. He doesn't look too special right now. He does have potential. There's a lot of upside to Mika Rantanen but you know second line player has a lot of good things he's not physical but I, I just don't know there's something about him which didn't perform last season and has got me second guessing myself not trading him away so as always guys have your say down in the comments you know at Chris or me on Twitter you'll find the link in the description how do you think things are lining up with the team? What moves do we need to make? Was I right to pick up Johns, the right defenseman? Should I have gone for the other one available? Did I need to go for either? Um, I kind of couldn't resist seeing the two four and a half stars there because we don't have a four and a half star defenseman. You now we've got Truba, Barry, Petrangelo, Olov, and got this be here, all four star. Good Branson, I think, is better than the three and a half star, but he is three and a half at the moment, so. You know, I was a bit tempted. We've dropped off. You can see preseason. Not too many players playing well. Master Shane again just steps up. You can see our three left sided defensemen are playing well. Down at the bottom end of the list, though, two out of three of our uh, right sided defensemen not playing well. Cadiz did get injured, so how long is he out for? He's out for three weeks, so that'll be a little bit of an interesting one, but I'm happy. I don't know if you're happy, but I'm happy right now. Dmitry Askin placed on waivers. I'm not sure I can I'm not sure I can pass up a left wing right wing. Someone with that flexibility on this kind of team. Add the shortlist for now. I mean, that's that's tempting. Patrick Berglund, he is 28, but he is a four-star player right now. And, oh, I might, I might not be able to pass up Patrick Berglund. I mean... There's some good players going on with us, and David Deshane. I can get, I, I yeah, I, I I can I can move past Deshane. That is fine. Scouting reports, yeah. So Yaskin, he's only 23. He's got four star potential. Last season, he didn't get too many points. Left wing, right wing, shoots left, ratings, not great. Um, serious liability, none of them. He's good physical, sort of uh, conditioning. Outstanding player. And Patrick Berglund, no. I have Landeskog, I've got Vodka, I've got Rantanen, I've got Kurt Deals, I've got 
Who's the other man? I've got another man on the left. I've got Rackle. I've got Rackle. So I've got five men there. I've got a lot of play players on that right wing, including Paul Jarvi and Spears and a couple of other youngsters. Uh, Merkley, I believe, is the other one. Miller, Sidlovsky, Hansel, McKinnon, McGinn. On the right, on the centre... Yeah, on the centre, we're pretty stacked as well. So I don't know if we need them, but can I pass up a four-star player? Would I be right or wrong to? So you can adapt pretty good. Clear-cut first line forward, so we would be stacking ourselves up. He is a defensive player. I wonder if we can just play him on that fourth line or the third line. Give him a ton of penalty kill minutes. Um, maybe put him on the point for a power play if he isn't getting anything like that. Ooh, I don't know, boys. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. He is... Oh. He is severely tempting. 28, we could play him for two years. We'd be able to phase out maybe... Maybe we drop Rackle or Kadeels or Rantanen, or maybe we trade Rantanen and bring in Patrick Berglund to play on the second line, Bodka down to the third. One of them on the second, one of them on the third anyway, and then Kadeels on the fourth line with Rackle as backup. Or Rackle on the fourth line, Kadeels as backup. I don't know. I don't know, but I, I want to pull this trigger. I really want to pull this trigger. We're not going to get there, are we? Because we're, so we're so low down on the the pole. Are we actually able to trade for him? Like, would we be able to... Smallman or Vaidra? Smallman or Vaidra? Oh my gosh. See... That that trade might go through. I don't know, boys. I don't know. Um, so let me know on that as well. Let me know on that. So we're going to end the video here. And we're going to start the season, our first game, at Montreal. And then we go up against... Let me just have a quick look at Montreal's team so you can see who we are coming up against. So the Canadiens... Star player Carey Price, P.K. Subban and Max, Max Pacioretty backing up there. Gachelniuk and Pjeknic with uh, Condon. That's good goaltending. That's good depth in goaltending. Markov, Eller, oh, Gallagher as well. Who they got coming through? Julien Gauthier. He looks like he could be a good player. So, Montreal... Good goaltending, good defence. That is something that normally plays out well in the season. And Carolina with Cam Ward and Eddie Lack not looking so good. You know, the best players are Falk, Lindholm, uh, Skinner, Stahl, Stahl and Hanfin. So Noah Hanfin, one of their better long-term players as well with... Uh, Bastiari. Who can produce? Who can produce? Justin Falk, Jeff Skinner, Eric and Jordan Stahl, Noah Hanfin there, and of course, Elias Lindholm, who I quite like. I did try and trade for him as well. Look at that. 18 checking. 21 agility. Wow, that's broken the game there, hasn't it? I thought it only went up to 20. Um, but as a defensive forward, someone as young as Lind Lindholm, who can make an impact like him. Um, yeah, I'd love him. I'd love him, especially since he can play all three. Probably centre and right wing better than most, but I would have loved to have picked up Lindholm. So, we're facing off against two teams that I tried to trade with last season in our opening two of the second season here in the NHL so hopefully Kudils will get back a little quicker 
I'm really, really, really hoping with Patrick Berglund that we'll be able to get him. I'm going to put the claim in. I'm going to put... I can't, I can't not. I can't not. I'm trying to give you guys decisions to make, but I can't step away from Patrick Berglund. I just cannot do it. So let's see if we get him. Let's see how the season works out, but that'll have to be in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, take care of yourselves. Like the video, subscribe, all that stuff if you haven't. And I'll see you back here soon for more Franchise Hockey Manager 2. I've been Chris Ormy. These are my Colorado Avalanche. And uh, come back very, very soon for Game 1 of Season 2.